it's it's that time. It's, 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 I'm just it is that time, yeah. Thing. It's but... just, anyways. In, in three, <clears throat> two, one. Sunday, August 11th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes All Out, the Bear Podcast. We're going to turn on the links. Episode number, uh, 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 what, what number was it again? I already forgot. Uh, 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 520. 520? Yeah, uh, it's not it's not a hundred. Uh, 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 uh. But the one cool thing is, I'm on bottom today. I'm underneath the lovable, adorable, handsome Hadrian. Hello, everyone. Uh, see, hi, Hadrian. See, 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 now I can. I it's can. Good to be on top. I can put my my uh, hand in a certain formation and then move up into Hadrian. Ah. Okay. Right. And there we go. I was nice. trying trying to fist him. Apparently, he's he's pretty right, loose. I can do it there. Yeah, there we go. go. I can look around. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you were looking in the correct the direction too. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, there we uh, go. In 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 random comment mode, uh, Phil is right. I am currently working on trying to get to that tr- true verse status. So <laughs> that's another matter altogether. Still working on that power verse uh, merit badge. Yeah, I, I still I'm you know I'm an expert top. I just need to work on that whole bottoming thing. So just got to kind of like be in a little. But anyways, that's not the what yoga. we're here for. You happy baby more. No. no. Huh. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Where were we? Uh, I was going to stop a thing. And uh, uh, Gary, uh, why do we have Hadrian back so soon? Uh, a, well, because a month. we knew that we had a lot to talk about in this particular mini series within the other series. Uh, so. Yet again, it's one of those, let's talk about sex uh, episodes. If you were with us last month, and welcome back, uh, we're talking about what porn did to us, actually taught us, not directly did to us. Um, But if you didn't listen to episode 516, which was part one, go ahead, put us on pause, go back, (laughs) have a nice listen. You'll listen to some interesting things that we had to say. I actually went back and listened to it again today just to like catch myself up to where Wait, we are today. Let, let's pause for a moment to let them do that. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, so last month when we talked, we were talking about like what we learned about porn, how we learned about porn, the early stages of of. You know, that introduction we talked about uh, print platforms in the early digital age. Um, And so uh, something I was curious about that I wanted to discuss in this uh, part two was about what porn did to our self-image and our confidence. Because I think for most of us, we agree to some aspect porn was an awakening. It was a educational tool. It gave us things that we did not necessarily get in other ways. Not all of us had progressive parents like Hadrian's mother who sat down with a pen and a pad, I believe, and tried to explain stuff. (laughs) Planned Parenthood pamphlets are are education. Um, Because I think despite age and time changing, it's still happening today that people are being influenced by porn in terms of how they feel about how sex 
how the sex is done and what's expected out of it. Mm-hmm. And also, like, what that means about how they feel about themselves, whether or not they're good at it, and if they should share that with other people. Um, we've monetized porn into solo uh, realms now. We talked uh, previously about, like, how we took it away from the big company houses, and then, you know, pretty much everyone can be their own star slash director slash content creator now. Mm-hmm. And... You know, more than ever, I hear people talk about things like OnlyFans.com and uh, uh, (laughs) Just for Fans. Just for Fans. fans. You know, these platforms that are kind of meant to do that. And he and um, sorry, Damon, you had actually said in last week's episode about how you have no interest in giving people money when you're not really sure quite what the content is, A, and B, like if it's just going to be something that like isn't of interest to you, like why should you bother to pay for it? True. Um, you know, if you're just going to sit there in a chair in a corner of a room, what yeah. do you do? Um, that Me don't get previous. wrong. Like, well, that could be some some people's interest, but in the episode, you were kind of like, mm, that's not really like my thing. Like, you wanted content, yeah. story, and like plot interest, like something that really kind of drives stuff, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind yeah, of like I mean, a, a Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, if you will. <laughs> it sucks, you know, where there's like scenes of things and then stuff bridges it together. Well, see, that's, you are getting that from a Just for Fans, Only Fans, just by the way, because what's being monetized there is the model themselves and their adventures as a, as a, a sexual person on their own and the sex that they have mm-hmm. and then by themselves. And then they show you the parties they go to and that sort of thing. It's supposed to be a form of vicariousness that you get to live through. They've monetized ah. their entire sex life and their, their persona as models, but they've monetized in, the, in that aspect. Mm-hmm. So the story you're following is their real life adventures. I love how you did air quotes for real life. Oh yeah, I mean some, yeah. of, that, some of that's a little playful. A little, uh, some yeah. people will take liberties with what they're doing. Yeah, and that was some of the things that kind of started bothering me a lot about like X two videos because there are some people that would make this whole elaborate story, mm-hmm. and looking at the video, it's not like the the facts aren't there. Right. So like, I'm at a truck stop with and i'm meeting this dirty trucker from like you know just randomly thing and it's clearly their boyfriend like like if you look back through the videos like oh well wait that was your boyfriend like you know saying that you were you know you guys were out on a you know you have a video saying like I, i'm out with my boyfriend and we decided to go hook up in a park you know outside and then three videos later you're meeting a trucker mm-hmm. at a truck stop and it's the same guy. Like, yeah. He could have gone to, you know, instructional school. Sure. And, like, he could authentically be a trucker. It just happens he knew. He's his boy. No, it's just school. I would be the headmaster, and I assure you, I haven't seen <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Again, but, but there's, that's there's, kind there's, of... there's, in that case, they're selling some kind of fantasy between them and the person they're acting with. There's this one, there's that one couple, ex Navy daddy or something like that, and there's another couple that that they just did this long string videos and I've seen those descriptions show up on every website with something else. That's just something else, even more lurid than the last one. It's just carried on forever. Mm-hmm. Hell, some of the first videos I ever saw on AOL 15, 20 years ago still exist today. And I know they're reposted with an even dirtier story now than I saw when it was emailed to me. It's just mm-hmm. people can do anything they want with, you know, what, what they're, what's being shown. Um, but there's no such thing as a story in a video of that type because they need to be able to remarket it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's usually how I feel. I hate to say it. That's usually how I feel about the just for fan stuff. It's like if, oh, if, yeah. if I'm not, I mean, true. Like, well, I mentioned it in the episode, like Hadrian, when you had your for a while, cause you were, you had a just for fans account, but mm-hmm. you weren't monetizing it. Um, yeah. like, like I enjoyed watching his stuff because I enjoyed watching Hadrian, like mm-hmm. doing things. So I was okay with that. Also, oh, his was free, but um. <laughs> well, I, I mean, there's something to be said though. Like, there's a couple people online who are constantly posting content, and Hedrid, you had kind of made this comment about like basically every cum shot is on is on film. Like, it's every, right. every, it's in front of a camera of some sort somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about that in the past like, uh, month, and I was like, yeah, like I'm. Those are the people I'm not really interested in. Like, there's a couple in my Twitter feed, but they're they're very popular amongst the people that I'm already following. That they keep like mm-hmm. reposting their stuff, and it's like I don't care like i get it you get off daily multiple times a day like you have to come that's fine 
right. like that you're not alone in that experience, but it's a little overkill. Like, yeah, at least for me I, personally, something is something has become skewed in what some people in that community consider to be value of the sexual act. And they really do believe that it's the orgasm of the ejaculation and that's it, or just being seen in some capacity. I don't think they understand that there's a, there is a performance aspect to sex as well that needs to be invested in. And, and I've looked through a lot of these just for fans and they don't, it's not there. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, they're, they're, they're like caricatures of what we think porn is, is, is what it, I believe it. It's just being performed by people that I could possibly meet at a bear bar. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, you're making it sound kind of like the those like before like just for fans and stuff these those 30 second video clips that show up on porn sites where it's mm-hmm. basically the climax of the encounter or mm-hmm. even even not even to the climax it's like like fucking this hot bottom and it's 30 seconds of just this one shot just right down of him fucking and that's it yeah and like people don't know it's it's one of the value, reasons what's the value of that yeah it's, it's one well, of the reasons but, why whenever i'm on like xtube or Pornhub, uh and, and i'm trying to do a filter i filter for anything that's at least five minutes long if not longer not that i'm necessarily going to watch the full five minutes i'm going to fast forward mm-hmm. of course but uh and the and, and you can't see it but i'm using my finger to move along a timeline <laughs> Versus pressing a remote control to fast forward because, of course, I'm watching this all on my iPad and my bed. But, you know. Right. Like yeah. And, and actually, I, I used to work, as many of you know, I used to work for uh, Corbin Fisher. And I ran their IT department and we, we streamed their videos. And we would look at the metrics of where people were jumping around in the videos, too, because we could see that when they would stream it. And people went, they watched the first 30 seconds. They skipped to, the, like, around the 15% mark. And if it was more than one person, they'd skip to about the 50% mark because they're looking for the penetration shot is what we found out. And then they mm-hmm. skipped to the 90% mark looking for the cum shot. People went to very specific Ooh. places. They really didn't care about this vast amount of other things we were doing in the scene, not the first go around. They wanted to know, am I going to get the good stuff that I want? And then we noticed also that people would jump to the 50% mark. And if they saw a condom, they didn't go to the 90% mark. They'd abandon the video. So we saw wow. all kinds of really interesting. And this was in 2010, 2011. So this was when you know streaming was still really big. So yeah, it's, it was uh, interesting. It, we got a lot of interesting metrics out of that. And and XTube and Pornhub show the same thing. They they give out metrics on their stuff, and people skip ahead to very specific things. They want to know they're going to get the fulfillment out of it, so that they're not getting to enjoy the art form that is porn. Mm-hmm. I think art, porn as an art, is is almost dead. It's now just it's a uh, it's a means to an end almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons why I do like some of certain people is because they're not doing the the close up, not just doing close ups of of the actual fucking or sucking, you know, the the absolute close ups. They're also showing the wire shots because at least for me, uh, what turns me on in porn is with when I can see the whole picture. If that makes any sense, I don't really? mind yeah. like like getting some of those close up shots, but I don't want it to just be that because it's boring. Right. It, it's it's basically I don't care what the body shape or body it's type the of the person person seeing that same thing is practically the same for every single video, and it's just the same thing over. But if I could see the people actually performing mm-hmm. the act and, and actually right. seeing more of the bodies. Uh, while I would prefer to see like full body all the way to the head, to the face, I mm-hmm. understand some people want their face covered or just like their head cut off in the in the frame. That's fine, but if I could see more of their body and be the body shape, and maybe it's just because I think I'm more turned on by the bodies that are performing the act than necessarily the act itself. Absolutely, yeah. right. Well, I mean, you're you're looking for a bigger context mm-hmm. other than just like, you mm-hmm. know, tab A, slot B kind of stuff. And yeah. I think that this relates back to what I was saying, you know, in terms of like confidence that when people are self-creating, you know, and especially if they're aware of what the data, the analytics is of what's being shown, then in a way they probably feel that they have to produce what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. And then that just is a, it's like a, you know, a self, you know, chasing circle basically of what it is they may also feel like oh well i don't really want to show my body very much you know people are mostly responding to things that are just cum shots or 
um, you know, very specific kind of content without, you know, it really being about the what it is that the person is providing as a whole package. No pun intended. Yeah. And you skirted on something there. I'm not sure that what people think they're getting out of using OnlyFans and just fans to quote unquote express their body positivity. I'm, if they're actually doing that, that's wonderful. But you mentioned something that there's people who are going on these platforms and they're getting bullied or pressured into showing things that maybe they don't want to or feel ready to because they're getting this fan base and they're getting likes from it. The likes are more addictive than the, the, the art form itself of presenting yourself. So they may be, they, what they may be doing is they think is expressing themselves, but really they're being told to express themselves in a very specific way by the audience. Mm -hmm. Good point. And these of are course. young people. I mean, I, mean it didn't, I didn't learn how to control that part of my career until I was 26 or 27. Um, I know when I was 21 or 22, anybody could have taken advantage of me, and I'm so glad I didn't run into people who did. But it's very easy to get, when it's, when it's a director or a producer or something like that in a film who controls the creative process of that, that's great. But on OnlyFans or Just for Fans, your producers, your directors, and your, your, your bosses are multitudes. It's as many fans as you have, essentially. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're, your boss is the box populi. Yeah, so unless mm -hmm. you're actually into that sort of thing. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it, you're, it, a don't we, we're not trying to yuck somebody else's yum but you have to realize is because of this type of situation you have to realize that's the situation and also be mm -hmm. are you into that is that what you really want right um if it's <laughs> if it's not you say hey this is for my fans i'm showing off what i like my creativity in in sex uh, and I want you to enjoy it. If you do, if you don't, I guess yeah. go somewhere else because I'm not necessarily going to listen to to everything you want because that's not what I want. Um, it it is one of those things of of a combination of people respect respecting you and and you respecting yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Because if you if you're into that thing, that is a type of respect for yourself by by following the commands or, or the wishes of your audience. Uh, but uh, if you're just doing that just because you're trying to, to make the money and it's not really something that you really want, that's not respecting yourself. I mean, you need to have that own that self respect to really be. Uh, uh, to, it, it, just for your own sanity, for if anything, um, and and there is a thing of of sometimes you there are fans you just don't want. Yeah, speaking of which, John kind of posts something in the chat. He says, "I think there's also the element that if you've done certain specific things for a fan, word spreads and more of that demographic follows you to want more of that specific act." Yeah. Also, I I that just in that same realm. There's a thing in social media where, remember the cinnamon challenge? Something stupid like that. Remember Glozell doing the cinnamon and a bunch of other people were doing it or the ice bucket challenge, all this stuff. I'm concerned that there is now a, a, a large enough mass of people doing um, Just for Fans and OnlyFans that certain acts could be considered uh, meme-worthy across that kind of, a wave of activity where people are doing the same kind of sexual act across uh, porn could be become a de facto feature of these kind of platforms because it's only a matter of time before the platforms of just for fans and only fans start demanding more of the models as a whole for the brand not just for themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean that, as we've that's... noticed from social media we all exist with today that's the eventual race to the bottom is you know how much can you do for the brand not for yourself yeah i mean and i think what people don't realize possibly is when they join those platforms especially this is my guess if you're younger is that you're allowing literal you know multitudes of people to become your employer slash boss whatever and they make those demands upon you and if you uh -huh. don't have enough self-awareness or confidence along the lines of what i will and will not do then you fall to doing what it is that individuals are interested in right and mm -hmm. if you could be perfectly fine with that, you you know, if you're willing to submit to that kind of a model and to have someone say to you, you know, this is what I want out of you and this is how I will reward you for that behavior, then it's perfectly fine. But I don't know if everyone's fully aware of that in advance, you know, when yeah. they're going through the the motions right. of setting up an account and, and doing that kind of stuff. 
I mean, I think there's a big difference between like responding to positivity about like, hey, this is the first time I've tried out a jock strap. You know, what do you think? And then everybody kind of goes nuts and then jock straps become a thing. You know, that that can go to a certain point, but it can also I mean, I think everything pretty much can become a double edged sword if you're not aware or paying attention sure. in some fashion. As a as someone who would be a only fan, not the person giving the performance, but or, but the the person subscribing to it. Uh, one thing you've got to think of is is to respect those people who are doing their thing. They're they're putting themselves out there. Uh, you could you could ask politely for something, and if they don't do it, just be like, oh well, it's maybe just not their thing. Um, but having their having respect for those fans and, and pay for them to make sure that they're respectful to themselves is always a good thing. Um, so it's kind of a quid pro quo thing. It's where you have to respect those as you would want to be respected. I think, and that's if you even have there. any self respect. I mean, yeah. that's true. One of the key things is like if you learned a lot of your. Uh, place in the world through media in some fashion how you were told to behave and look and act and all that kind of stuff it can really you know compound and be more complicated like especially when it comes to adult media and there's expectations that you're going to talk a certain way you're going to behave a certain way Mm -hmm. you know um and i think that that's the thing that most individuals don't pay attention to but i also think that 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 as it should happen generationally it's adjusting and changing yeah that now more younger individuals don't necessarily care about roles or fall into types, so to speak, in terms of, yeah. you know, the what I think we went through, like, especially in the 90s, this uber masculine kind of uh, yeah. portrayal of, mm-hmm. you know, what what it's going to be to, to meet with a, yeah. a stranger, so to speak. The one thing I never I never quite got was the whole tripe or tripe the trope during um, in porn, especially in the nineties, of like the straight guy like getting seduced by the gay guy or or taking advantage of the gay person. You know, right. it was that kind of like since they're so overtly and overly masculine and heterosexual, they could never really do this, but you know, it clearly becomes that kind of situation. Yeah, but it's a fantasy. And, and there are some porns, it seems like, from that era where the guys were even told to flame it up a little bit to be mm-hmm. for a nice thing. Because there are some I'm watching, I'm like, there's no way this is not just over enunciated. Maybe they're just overacting because, you know, they ended up being porn actors for a reason. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, they weren't doing Shakespeare. And um, but they, they don't. We, they would just be so flamboyant if they were the bottom. I always thought that was a very strange thing to to put forth. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think there was this strange um, expectation, especially from gay bottoms, that they would mm-hmm. imitate women, that they would behave right. like women. And I think that's for me growing up in that era. Like that was one of the reasons, like I talked about in the last episode, about having like a, a personal issue about like you know, putting that role on profile, you know, status or things, because like I specifically realized like, you know, that's not something that I do often. I don't want that to be like the primary focus of another individual. Like I would prefer like you like recognize me as a whole entity, a whole body, a whole person. Um, As opposed to just a whole. (laughs) Thank you. Sorry. I just realized as as I said that I was like, that was W H O L E. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. But, you know, I mean, that was, but that, you know, when you have this, I, I mean, I was just watching, uh, this is a sidebar, I'll bring it back around. So I was just watching David Letterman on Netflix, his, uh, my next guest series. And I watched him with his interview with Ellen DeGeneres and it was profound how she was talking about how important it was to come out because she said when she was growing up, she's like, we were not represented. You don't see us buying toothpaste. You don't see us in a home. You don't like, Mm -hmm. she said there was all this stuff that was missing. So you don't feel validated and you question your personal existence and whether or not that matters. And to bring it back, I mean, the same thing happens in adult media. If you don't see, you know, Zoftig men, if you don't see people of color, if you don't see, um, you know, men being, 
quote unquote natural, which I mean as in themselves, as opposed to produced in some fashion, mm -hmm. then you you kind of question, you know, whether or not you measure up to yeah. other individuals. Right. And, yeah. and, and those roles were both used for positive and negative. Some of those were used for, as a storytelling aspect so that the porn, the porn director could say, hey, you know this is the bottom because they're acting a certain way. But I think that had a, a negative impact and it taught a whole generation of how they were supposed to act if they were a certain way. Yeah. Um, I know that on the opposite side, on straight porn, of course, the conversation for years has been how porn taught boys to treat women. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can tell you that everybody I know that grew up in the 90s and 2000s, they, their the idea of straight porn is the race to the bottom was always anal sex. That was what everybody wanted to do. But also the way they treated women and the way they would, you know, either treat them like a sex object or treat them like royalty in these weird ways was, was expressed in the porn they were watching, where there was some porn that treated women like goddesses and some of them treated them like trash. There was no middle ground. Women weren't, weren't empowered with their own agency and ability to direct themselves and act in a way that was natural. And I think porn did that too. And there's been a scramble over the last several years where there's, there's a more expression and more positivity in porn. And I, I like mm -hmm. seeing how that's being expressed. And people seem to be, you know, uh, Jeff, you mentioned that treating the models with respect and, you know, giving in the quid pro quo of treating them with the same respect you expect from them. Um, that's a new concept, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that, because I can tell you from my experience as a, as, a, as a model that I've been approached and treated like, Either I belonged on a pedestal or I belonged in a gutter. But the middle ground is, is very, very rare. And to mm -hmm. be fair, we've put you at a pedestal before. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think that came from, uh, you know, personal expectations. Like, I will admit mm -hmm. this. When, when Hadrian, when you and I met at Tidal Wave at the water park many years ago. Well, maybe not many. Um you know, it's like I was intimidated to to walk up to you because I was like, oh, my God, Hadrian's like literally here in the flesh. Now, I knew you were a real person, but there was a, a personal confidence issue about like you understandably we were hanging around with other people and I didn't like want to burst into your world. I also didn't want to be one of those like, oh, my God, it's Hadrian. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> and Hadrian was hungry, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes he was, I was looking for a hot dog, a, a real hot dog. He was he was very hungry in the moment, but you were very polite and cordial, yeah. and that like established like oh hey yeah blah, blah, blah you know we should talk this and that and so I was like oh like I didn't walk away from it feeling validated and by that I mean like my existence is now like legit it was okay like something ventured something gained not the end right. of the world um, and so I think that the things have changed so much now in terms of where we are that especially with people able to make their own media mm -hmm. i'm more concerned i think than ever about like the disconnection factor where there are many people online like i don't ever expect to meet them a day in my life um and instead of it being like a much smaller uh possible like cast production category i don't know how i want to phrase this like of pool of potential like now it's much 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 bigger um, and whether or not, you know, we see them as, you know, real individuals, I'm still mm -hmm. not completely sold on. I only say it that way because it depends on how they put themselves out there. I really feel like if you put in some of the content of your regular life, I think you start to realize like, oh, they have a job that, you know, pays for this and they have pets and blah, blah, and this and that, Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, they, they like to stream playing video games, you know, right. And some, and that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about one in particular individual who I found really interesting because he wanted to start like a history, a LGBTQ history series while he was semi naked. Um, <laughs> I think there was like sort of he was testing the concept of a gimmick like, oh, if all of you think I'm so sexy, like, let's try to like see if you could get something else out of this. But it was interesting. And, and now right now, I think he's mostly doing uh, gaming, uh, video gaming with a headset. And then sometimes toys are involved. And that's what's on his I think it's a whole <laughs> fence. It's very intriguing. Like to me, I'm kind of like, you're really sexy, and I'm you're. I'm not sure what this is, but this is like you're trying <laughs> something, testing this something. Yeah. They're extending the medium. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> I agree. I agree with you so much, Gary. That like sometimes finding the like that they you know uh, I think one of our members kind of are sorry stream people sorry little words chat people um, yeah chats yeah. That we don't see them, like, we often don't see them as people. And that's true in some cases. You know, 
Hadrian was mentioning, like, you're either, like, some people were treated, like, high on the, you know, and then low in the gutter, depending on, you know, whoever they were talking to. And I think we often do that. You know, people often see porn as, um, oh, they're out to get money because they need money for whatever. Some people right. think it's, oh, they need their, you know, some people think it's the worst part, worst, worst case scenario that they're just getting money to get drugs so they can go on and, you know, vendors and whatever. Um, oh, the best one is that I do porn because I need money for HIV medication. Oh, that, yeah. Ooh. That yeah. was like, that was like, I'm like, really? That's A, that's not shameful, but B, you know, great rumor. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, and that's the thing, like, we, like, I've never quite gotten where that concept comes from. Well, maybe I do. I think it's because we, as a society, tend to treat sex as this holy thing and yeah. those that can do it or for money thing. yeah are are you know meant to be shamed and shunned and that kind of the the thing i've never really quite gotten personally you know mm-hmm. um especially growing up like my main thing now is like i like if you want to do it do it like i don't have a problem with those that want to do the just for fans and only fans and want to put their own content up there and go for it you know do you whatever chatterbait fuck whatever let's like mm-hmm. do it and see what ha- happens maybe it's a side job where you maybe get a few bucks every month you know to pay for gas or whatever or maybe it's something that lucrative where you can actually potentially maybe you know have a job or a career or quote unquote out of it but if you do it just do it like it doesn't shouldn't be a it shouldn't be diminished like any other job that anyone else is doing in the in the world that's my opinion about it sorry that's i just that's the way i feel about it don't do porn because you have to do porn because you want to right (laughs) yeah well i mean and that's where i think people get um like uh disillusioned where sometimes they think like oh this is a means to an end and if if you are gifted and by gifted i mean you have enough individuals that like what you do that can yes. yeah yeah right. <laughs> um creepy <laughs> this is not like public show theater peanut gallery all right so you know if there's enough if there's enough uh nexus of people who are interested in what it is that you have to provide then yes mm-hmm. technically you could probably afford some things for yourself the ones that I'm kind of like a little frustrated by are like, you know, like I need to be able to pay my rent. I need to da 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 or whatever. And I'm like, well, if you're kind of spelling that out, that already says to me that the model is probably not working for you, this concept of what it is, um, you know, and I think that some people see other people being successful, but they also may be missing like what it takes to be successful. Like there are some people that are true content creators, but they're also in a way busting their ass like to make mm-hmm. the content to put it out there and not aware of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes you know um and i think that there's some misnomers to that uh i mean i, I think of it this way if you know how much it takes just to take a selfie and to try to post that shit on social media take that and then multiply it i don't even know what the number would be you know as to to something more than just a still image in a brief moment you know, there's filters can only do so much, um, yeah. you know, to make to make magic happen, so to speak. Agreed. In that case, um, for me personally, like Hadrian, I have to think you have a very different story based on the things we've talked about in the past. Like, I have a feeling that your self-image in terms of porn and adult media prior to becoming involved in it didn't really have a factor. I don't. What do you mean? Um, I don't. I never got the impression that like watching it or being aware of it affected you like that you needed to modify yourself or do things in a certain way in terms of like sex but what i'm more interested in is like after you ended up becoming involved in the industry did you find yourself or can you now look back and say yes or no or maybe that you were affected by it like how you treated yourself and saw yourself like because of how you know others treated you in some ways or I don't know. I think my, my experience with porn, I think, is very unique and probably unrepeatable because of where I came in at the very dawn of the Internet 
mm-hmm. becoming the wave that it was and the way I got to participate in the in the first bare expression of itself on on the internet with, with porn and on X2 mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. I mean, there was no such thing as a hashtag bear tag until me and a dozen others came along, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, and also the feedback system just didn't exist. I didn't have to cross post to Tumblr and everything else. I didn't have to, I don't, I don't have to create a content, put it on OnlyFans, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram, put it on uh, Snapchat. I don't have to advertise it across 15, uh, 15 different areas. And I'll be honest, a couple of years ago when I created an OnlyFans and I played around with the with the platform for a little while, um, I realized that that's exactly the thing I was going to have to do. I was going to have to pay attention to the feedback that I was getting and somehow adjust myself to it. And I don't make porn for that purpose. I'm probably, I, I, I kind of perceive myself as one of the last people who makes porn for the art of it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's that's the point of the industry anymore. I'm probably a relic when it comes to that. I, I always <laughs> like the expression of it and people watching and saying, I can do that move to my husband. That's what I've, uh, that's what I liked to do. And unless I want to break down my porn to like how to's how, uh, watch me do with this zucchini. I'm not, I'm not doing that. And I'm not going to actually sit down with a dick and do it either. Who has time for that? Just I've, I've put enough stuff out Nobody there. Ain't there's got there's about thousands that. of videos of yep. me out there. Um, people can watch and derive what they need from that. Yeah, and, maybe not that's, maybe that's, matter and, maybe, fact. and maybe that's where we've come to. Maybe my interface with porn is very different than anyone else's. Like I said, I don't watch video porn. I read it because right. I know how the physical motion works. I get it. Um, it's the, it's my mind, my, it's my brain space when I'm in the moment. That's why I like puppy stuff nowadays is because I can connect with it mentally. I don't really care about the physical action anymore. That's why I don't care about a camera being there anymore. You, you know, you know, you have to tilt your hips and do all kinds of different stuff differently when you break out that camera. People don't realize how much it impacts the sexual motion and how much the scene and the physiology changes just from introducing a light and a camera. Yeah. Turn all that crap off and enjoy yeah. yourself. That's what I wanted people to do when they watched porn. I wanted them to say, okay, he had to do it with a camera on. Let's see what happens when I do it when all natural. Yeah. I think you bring up a good point that people are not aware of is that if, if you're producing the content, mm-hmm. your focus on what's happening is way different than just like Absolutely. whatever happens. But I think people Life, carry camera, that shadow over. story. <laughs> the <works. laughs> Right. But I think people carry that over subconsciously. They don't mean to. Mm-hmm. And it could be more problematic within our community. You brought up in the last video about how like a lot of the porn for quite a, a good number of years, maybe 10, 15 years or so, was driven or all pretty much created in, you know, uh, lower budget, like uh, hotel motel facilities. That's right. And so if you happen to go to an event, not that they're put on at such events, but you you're you're now in the space, quote unquote, like one bed, two beds, you know, sconce and table, you know. Like you, you kind of understand. Plus, I mean, if you believe in energies, a lot of sex happens in those places. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you may feel uh, subconsciously in a way like that you have to perform at a certain level because you are in said space. I mean, to me, that's uh, mm-hmm. probably no different than being in a bathhouse, you know, uh, or going to a known location where sex happens often, whether it be, you know, outdoors or uh, maybe somebody has a home that hosts parties or, or whatever. I think um, that a lot of that, I think, goes back to your own confidence, whether or not you are OK with how you are seen and how other people perceive you. And if mm-hmm. not, then you're going to be self-adjusting. And I guess what I'm saying is what you're going to self-adjust to is probably all that you have to fall back on, which is most likely what you've seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. Taken in in some fashion. Mm-hmm. You also have to see that that porn for a lot of people is more about uh, 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 how do I want to say this um, about fantasy. Oh yeah, is it, is sometimes the it, they want somebody living vicariously through the videos, so it's like a certain situation comes up and they it's it's that sort of fantasy that they're looking to enjoy um mm-hmm. mainly because maybe they can't do it right now or it's just something that they haven't been able to uh get together with so it, it's it's I, that the i appreciate the performers because they're they're helping to somewhat fulfill fantasies mm-hmm. vicariously speaking mm-hmm 
Yeah. I mean, sometimes it is the fantasy. Sometimes it's just the sex and sometimes it's just getting off. Like that's kind of what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's what people don't understand by watching the medium more in whether it's, uh, amateur based or professional based. I think people don't understand like that. There is those different layers to stuff other than, well, I, I take that back a little bit. I imagine in some amateur media that I've seen, it's like it's quite obvious. Like this is just about getting off. Like there is a, no fantasy or anything else in this just sure. moment. Um, probably because it falls less than the five minute length that Jeff <laughs> Um <laughs> Or it's the fantasy of just that certain thing happening right now when you don't have it. Sometimes well, it's I mean, a like, little so, fantasy. Sometimes it's a big fantasy. So I'll like I'll. Talk to you guys about something that um, I'm not. And I'm not specifically talking about dick size, okay? (laughs) No, I know. Like, so I'm going to talk about something uh, that someone just revealed to me, uh, and I'm not going to give away any names or whatever. But surprisingly, they were talking about their spouse, and they said, "I made a crack about like you know, like a quick something or other," and they were like, "Oh, that never happens," and I was like, "What?" And they were like, "They were like, yeah, um, we. That's not a thing for us. Like we." There's always time, like, which I think in a way it was kind of meant to say, like, it's a commitment. Like, there isn't a shortness, you know, in terms of, like, activity length in that. And I was really kind of surprised by that because in my mind, I'm like, that's not my understanding of men. Like, it can be, but, like, and yes, you're in a, in a long-term relationship and married, but married and all that. But I was like, in the moment, my brain was like, you know, eh, seven seven and a half minutes like you know the average and they were talking about you know like oh no like you know it's probably an hour and a half two hours <laughs> you know right and i was like i saw that look adrian how much, how, how much tread is on the tire my goodness <laughs> <laughs> but like since what we're talking about now i was kind of like oh but that like that goes to show how much you are not being affected by like yeah medium Mm -hmm. and like the content or whatever you are much more at least i'm presuming in the moment Uh uh-huh you know and uh bringing my my understanding or my guess is like a high level of intimacy to it Mm -hmm. you know and the sharing of space with another person as opposed to you know i'm been over in a bed you know doors unlocked open in a hotel everybody can come in kind of in and out kind of (laughs) Floppy bottom twenty three. So has <laughs> <laughs> no available yeah. on the Cubs out loud <laughs> Uh John says in the chat there are some folks who want to see fantasies they know they themselves would never be able to do themselves because of various serious risks. Absolutely, like mm. uh, well, I think there's a lot of occupational risk fantasy stuff. Like I know that I find interesting, but I don't ex expect it to happen like we kind of talked about in the last episode about this you know all these things you know where the delivery guy comes over or the utility fixing person and mm-hmm. blah, 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 you know yeah uh, but the reality of that like is in the cable easy. guy or the pizza delivery guy or right someone who's go. providing more than the standard service true it better be standard <laughs> 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 There's a reason why I always order from that pizza place. And I think that falls into porn as art. You know, when you're delivering a story and a situation yeah. that is that is fantastic and unlikely because you want, you know, you just want to you just want to get the juices going around that idea that you won't you don't have the ability to experience. And I imagine there's a lot of straight men who work to look at gay porn, or I'm a gay man who look I look at straight porn because there's just some things I'm just not willing to go through. Um, but I'll watch I'll watch the end result right there on the on the internet. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's porn as art. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. The whole the idea that you won't necessarily, like you, like John says, you will, you don't necessarily want to do it. You just like the idea of, of mm-hmm. seeing it being done. Yeah. It's a, it's, it, it's a fantasy, like a, not necessarily when you're actually going to do, but you know, it's something yeah. that kind of it, floats your boat. It's essentially a controlled, an uncontrolled control or controlled control chaos as it were right so like the whole you know as gary was mentioning the whole like in the you know 
ass up in a hotel room and let random people coming in. Yeah, you everyone kind of hopefully everyone kind of knows the, the risks that are involved with all of that and going on with those ideas of like you being blindfolded and, you know, what have you. So you don't necessarily do that, but you've seen porn where that's kind of the thing, or you've seen amateur people put videos out there where that's the thing, even though it's, even if it's amateur, there's still some level of control there. Cause one, mm -hmm. one, the person has video of everyone that's coming in, you know, maybe not, we may not necessarily see the face, but they probably have video of them showing the face, you know, things like that, you know, um, are with a, like an actual produced porn scenario, they probably know who's coming. It's not a totally 100% anonymous kind of thing going on. Because right. that's for whole, the whole point of the video. Yeah. But on the, on the opposite end of the art spectrum, when you're living a fantasy that you're looking for, uh, just 10 years ago, the big conversation in the gay porn community was, of course, about bareback. And there was the whole, like, the wrap it up uh, campaign that Chi Chi LaRue did. If you've never seen that video, it's horrifying. Uh, but she does this whole thing about wrap it up and put a condom on for when you make porn because she was advocating for safe porn because she was trying to say that that was the kind of porn that was a positive influence in the community so people would wear condoms and, you know, not die. And, and a lot of people were producing bareback porn because the idea was that, oh, if we produce the bareback porn, people will look at the porn online and therefore won't go out and have bareback sex. And that's true of adults, and I believe that's probably true of anyone 25 and up, but I think anyone 25 and under was looking at that porn as an example of how to be. And mm -hmm. there was some scary porn. Like, there was, there was that one guy, I think it was some bears or something that were doing a porn where they were fantasizing about, oh, take the condom off and, and fuck me bareback, daddy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't get to take that aspect, that, that very important moment in sex and say, no, that's a fantasy to pull the condom off and get fucked bareback and take a risk. That's not cool. So there's, you know, it's one thing to screw the delivery guy. It's another thing, you know, to fantasize about contractual diseases. Mm. Yeah. Contractual. Well, but that's just it. They're not fantasizing about contractual diseases. Like in that moment, I think they're delivering a, a skewed message, which is about self-empowerment right. to like make the decision in the moment whether or not you want to like use protection. But what they're not showing, because yeah. who probably is interested in it, is a conversation between two people as partners saying, yes, like, you know, when was your last test and blah, blah, blah. And when was your last screening and are you on prep, you know, and that, you know, and that kind of stuff. We, that's the stuff we're busy fast forwarding because it's beyond yeah. 30 seconds and we want to get to the 15% mark. Right. Can, yeah. I don't can we it. make it a requirement yeah. for, pe for people to watch Jeffrey? Not because of the title, because they spelled Jeffrey wrong, but, but because of the whole message that happens during that. If it had, had, sure. I, I, am I the only one who's seen Jeffrey? <laughs> no. I, I, I mean, it has Patrick Stewart as a flaming gay interior designer. It's right. one of the best it's movies just, ever made. It's based on a play, us, too. It's been so. quite a while since we've seen it. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I get what you're talking about, Gary, or Jeff. And I, 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 I you know, it's. It's a catch 22. Mm -hmm. While those videos were, those movies were made, they were made during that era of, you know, HIV scare and, and everything else. And um, it, while they have a message, as it were, sometimes that message can get, has, dissol has been dissolved, for lack of a better phrase. Right. Like a lot of okay. that has been, yeah. Um, but I, I think, I agree, like, with the whole, like, the whole bareback thing that was a big thing and it does i think it has affected people you know and we now have prep and all these other aspects to maybe keep yourself more protected but i like i prefer having those conversations like right. if you want to go that route you should, you should have those conversations if you're not going to have those conversations like <laughs> and you're not being an adult you shouldn't be here yeah like, well, I mean, as, I many, think... as many of the weird things we could sexualize in the in the gay community and make porn out of it, why can't we sexualize, hey, when was your last test? Why can't we sexualize that for just 15 seconds in a video and boom, get on with the scene? And I've seen some that I've tried, like especially like smaller, like I've seen a couple of like, and maybe it's just on Tumblr or whatever, but like I've seen screenshots of videos where they're talking in um, where the closed captions are kind of them talking while they're in yeah. bed. 
And I don't know I'm if sure, that's I'm sure they did that for HIV Awareness Month and good for them, but it really yeah. should be a standard. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think people do what is demanded. So oh, if we're if we're paying for no. content and it's not included, I like, I uh, think that people don't understand that they can actually you know not pay for that, or put in the request or the contact or whatever and explain to them like I want this you know to be a part of what it is that I'm I'm seeing or reviewing. Mm. Um, I don't know. I've always felt. Porn is supposed to be a tool of the people who know how to have sex to teach people how good sex can be and how and, and fulfilling it can be for your life if you engage in the practice. It uh-huh. was never supposed to be. Uh, I don't. I don't. I never thought it was supposed to be just an anatomy class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or an, uh, it, it's. Yeah, people and, and shouldn't it, be making people shouldn't be making porn because somebody's checked off the box. I want butt sex with an interracial couple, and one of them has to be trans, and that's what I want today. Can you fulfill that order, please? It was never supposed to be McDonald's or Burger King. It was I, to, I, it was I wish it was that me. easy to find I that should, sort of thing, though. I am producing content because I want to tell you what good sex is. You don't get to tell me. I'm the artist. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming at it from a whole different direction, though. I know, like, because Adrian, <laughs> when you just said that, I was like, "Yeah, but you can do that on X too." Yeah, like yeah. you could put in keywords, you can put in tags, like you could, you could do that if you want to. But that doesn't. Yep. But I mean, you're not technically ordering it up; you're just searching it out. I guess is right. like a more effective uh, portion of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think. <sighs> but I think porn becoming a client-driven enterprise, the way it is, where it's just social media-driven essentially. And your your fan base is what drives the activity or what happens. I think that's dangerous territory. That's that's where I'm ending up on that. <laughs> See, we need we need a new porn studio, uh, 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 Daddy Hadrian Porn, uh, which is all educational porn. Well, see, that's the thing. It always though. starts off it's... with the 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 epic message about things to consider for sex and being prepared. And then ends up with super sexy men doing sex. But given what Hadrian had said, if you were to look at the analytics, the message in the beginning would probably be skipped and they would just jump or cut or. Okay, maybe it's separate videos. Skippable. You press play and you have to sit there and watch the whole thing. Yeah. You can't fast forward. (laughs) It does not give you control. And then I repost it myself over on Pornhub. And check out the stuff that I don't want. Now I'm gonna pop. Well, you re- see that's that reality in. But that, but that's part. Of Why the do you have to pop the bottom bubble, bubble? See I mean, now, that... now we need we we need to do maybe maybe what we need to do is uh, is get uh, uh, some more LTASs where we get more into the nitty gritty about you know teach the young gays. And I suppose non gays if they don't Ooh, have to make slides. Yes, yes, <laughs> we could. This this Jerry would be perfect. Again, uh, maybe it's a new series on the that comes out La Media Network. Uh, the COL Media, uh, new from COL Media, Daddy Hadrian talks about sex. Oh, my goodness. It will be yeah. this DDTAS. We have this vision of a of the, the a pie chart turning into a butthole, and I just I <laughs> I just don't yep. know how I feel about that. Some electric company style transition. <laughs> <laughs> Here, okay, so so something to put on our list. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Daddy Gary is to uh, uh, new LTAS of. Uh, uh, safe sex. Sure. Because we have never done a to- topic about safe sex. Right. And it's such an archaic subject now. I think it needs to be, probably needs to be brought up a little bit. Yeah. And even revisit some, some old comments like uh, bottoming, topping. Uh, yep. Maybe even revisit blowjobs. There's a bunch of topics we Ooh. probably should just revisit. Talk about dental dams. There we go. Um, that being said, I think that could potentially get us into like a, a part three of the series, um, about what we think the, the future is going to end up being, uh, and what, what we would like it to be versus what it may very well end up being. Uh, that being said, I think that 
right now we're quite in like a, an evolutionary phase and things are a bit mixed. I think that uh, one of the things I enjoy the most is that I see young individuals who seem to be more empowered than ever to be body positive yeah. uh, compared to Absolutely. like when we were their age. I think that that's good. I'm just also cautious about the fact that we're in a time and a place that that may not necessarily always be the best thing because of being in an age where we have yet to recognize the seriousness of bullying um, and how people treat each other. Like I just said this yesterday or the day before to somebody, they were talking about how um, there was a protester at our pride and uh, how the individual who was protesting, they were all by themselves. They like, you know, we're over across the way, whatever. And someone was on the PA system for Pride Fest and they gave a nickname to the protester. And this is, you know, a, a while ago, a month and a half ago. And I looked at the person who's explaining the story to me because I was there, but I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention. We had a booth and stuff. And all of a sudden I stopped and I said, wait, why did the person on the microphone say that? Like meaning the person who was addressing the crowd at Pride Fest. And they were like, well, you know, they were making fun of the other individual. I was like, I said, you mean they were bullying them? And I could see like the the like everything just came to a <laughs> stop in the conversation. It's like, wait, I was, what? Oh, I was just trying to point out. I was like, we're not helping the situation. Like, why would you like want to say anything? Just because they do it doesn't mean we have to, or that's the proper way to respond. Because the whole conversation was stemming around the fact that you don't know about someone's background and what they're capable of. And mm -hmm. so I feel that way, you know, today in terms of like what people are putting out there is, you know, I, I prefer to lift people up. If I see people, you know, that are posting first time stuff or, you know, learning about themselves and that, you know, that they can be, you know, body positive and have, you know, a sense of beauty about themselves for who they are, because I didn't have that. I still don't in some ways have that now. I get mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of in. Um, different doses in certain ways when I do things like, you know, if on an app, like I, you know, unlock private pictures or whatever, um, you know, I, I appreciate that, but I'm very, you know, kind of insular about it. Like I'm very protective because of the fact that I was bullied when I was younger and I want that hopefully to not be the issue today. So people being more open, my hope is, I guess that, you know, people have better self image and so, and confidence about themselves, you know, in terms of like how they're, uh, objectified, I guess is really what it comes down to. Sorry, I'm trying to catch yeah. up on because a bunch of stuff came yeah, in. We had a. Uh, I, uh, I did have to. We did have to. It's been. Oh, really? Like with that concept of. Are you I catching up, Damon? <laughs> we were losing you there for a second. Oh, welcome I back. You're back. You're fine now. <laughs> uh, but okay. I always say, we just like uh, we just had to inform somebody about what the dental dams were. Oh yeah, because uh, I don't know about you, but I don't think dental dams are commonly used at all in the game com community yet, or, or the gay male community, or. They were definitely more popular with lesbians, I think. Yes. But uh, I, yeah. I did see them. I did see them handed out occasionally at uh, at at uh, bathhouses and stuff in the south. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's not to say that we can't use them. <laughs> True. I don't know how 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 much can dental dams stretch. Like I, I've never actually had one. Like I've actually seen one in person, so I don't know how that works. They're they're not very stretchy. They're a little thicker than you think they are, uh, yeah. and and they're not fun. Uh, it was because they were powdery and latexy, and it was like it was like uh, somebody compared it to giving a blowjob through a magazine. Like if you just laid a magazine on someone and tried to go down on them, it's like that. Yeah, yeah, they were not fun. <laughs> the things we did to yeah. keep ourselves safe, life was terrible. Uh, but um, dental dams still exist, you guys by the way. Taking a blue pill. <laughs> The blue pill is enhancement. It's not protection. There's a difference. Well, it depends on which blue pill you're talking about. Yeah, you got yeah. a point. I was talking That's about your Oh. <laughs> the other blue pill has been generic for a long time. Yeah, true. 
I mean, there, there's even advertising on some com podcast with Blue Chew. Right. Blue Chew is not a sponsor. Comes out loud. <laughs> sure. I mean, there's – and the thing that I think some people, you know, don't understand in terms of um, – sex and personal safety is that we're still living very much in an age of like self-education and self-awareness um i mean it's it's actually well now that i think about it, it's the same thing as just like sex itself you know what do you know how do you find out about it most likely unless you live in a progressive area with an education system that takes it seriously and wants you to be a well-rounded individual you're gonna find things out or figure it out through other alternate means mm -hmm. um yeah. And I think that's why, you know, having this uh, series of the LTAS, you know, on Cubs Out Loud has kind of been something that we do is just to give people an awareness. You know, by no means we're experts, but we're just trying to bring light to stuff uh, so that people, you know, could at least, you know, there is the great Internet in which you can find a, a vast many things. Be careful and measured about, you know, what you take in because yeah, some yeah. of it's probably crap, uh, you know. And some of its other good, great stuff. So, yeah, I think um, what I'm hoping for is that people, you know, like you were talking about earlier, Hadrian, is engaging with other individuals, you know, recognizing like them as a person and their humanity in that moment uh, and what's going to come out of that, uh, you know, and how they can be better individuals because of, of that, whether it's, you know, uh, exchanging bodily fluids. Or, you know, maybe not quite getting to that favorite. point. <laughs> I mean, and I think that's something else that people were kind of missing out on is like that that doesn't always have to be the case. Like I've seen uh, recently, and it's not trending, but I've seen repeatedly some people kind of making reference to like, yes, I'm sitting here with a boner, but I just really want someone to cuddle with. Right. Sometimes yeah. fraudage is all you need. I mean, not even that. Sometimes you just want to like, sometimes it's just about the connection with another person. It's yeah. a way to make you feel like, again, the whole self image and things we're talking about, like sometimes it's good to know that someone wants to be there with you, not necessarily just in a sexual way, but in a intimate kind of way. Mm. You know, that's sometimes something that we, I think as humans, we want, everyone desires that desire need to be like, loved and respected and and thought on mm -hmm. and that can sometimes and you know like we know like it leads to some good things and not always good things sometimes we you know evaluate um our self-worth on what others think of us we need the um, we need more of the aftercare in, in porn aftercare porn because <laughs> I, I would totally like go through to to the good parts and then skip to the end to see the after that's a really good point you know because we, I, most porn scenes are like 20 and 30 minutes and i'm good for like 17 to 11 minutes um so i've always felt or i'm sorry 7 to 11 minutes i'm not good for that whole 20 minute thing i just don't have mm -hmm. the friction for that but i've always wondered you know what if we just had porn that went up to like the 14 minute mark and then after that was just cuddling and falling asleep and then the camera fades to black i think that'd be amazing mm -hmm. Maybe yeah a little pillow talk yeah it's funny Maybe like some of the <laughs> Wait, what? Free what? Are... Adrian, what did you just say? <laughs> Watching Bob's Burgers after working in the afterglow. Oh, I thought you said we'll go to Whataburger. And I was oh. like, <laughs> I mean, that's what I had for, for dinner last night or this yeah. morning. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Like, you get up from the cuddle, you run to the door, you answer the door, like with a towel around you to get the Postmates of Whataburger you had ordered, and then you go back and cuddle and eat. And this is amazing. We, we have, we're sitting on a cash cow, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, nobody <laughs> else heard that. <laughs> the the, the hey, new that's our idea. <laughs> the the bear porn company uh, by Col Media. Uh huh. Uh, Daddy Hadrian's. Uh, 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 I love that name. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what what we 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 call call your porn company, Hadrian. I don't have one. I mean, if you if there was one, oh, um, if if you were if you if you were the like figurehead of a porn company, what would you call your porn company? Daddy Incorporated. There you go. Uh, Daddy Ink. Daddy Ink. Daddy Ink. Yep. Daddy Ink. And it would be yep. an ink with a C, 
But if somebody heard it, they would think Daddy Ink. And I'm like, oh, I love Ink on Daddies. And then, mm, yeah, that'll be that'll be the offshoot Daddy Ink, which is a, just the the tattoo daddies. Yeah, be an offshoot brand. <laughs> there, there you go. And then, yeah, and then Speaking you would be specifically hiring to make sure that you have stars of like various different types. Uh, and, and colors and, you know, just that, like a wide rainbow of people. <laughs> if if somebody could have corralled all those men together to make a studio, it would have been done by now. <laughs> this we, is, we're all just look, a this is just a dream. We all want too much from the world. This, to is, get that. this is just a dream. This is well, a fantasy. I'm not saying it would actually happen, but this would be no, nice. No, no, but I mean. Because I keep gonna... seeing complaints. says, there's not a lot of colored people in 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 porn and i'm like well there is it's just not many because i don't think as many people are like many of those type of people yeah. are trying to get into it because as it says you don't do porn because uh, you have to you do it because you want to especially right. considering and, the pay. <laughs> yeah it's it's i did it's, one porn and that was it well i mean i think there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into it. I mean, it is that whole like, you know, chasing tail issue like that goes around and around in a circle is one factor. You know, mm -hmm. do you really see yourself represented? Do you think you could be in it? I really think what it comes down to, like, you know, what I wanted to say is about this whole like fantastical concept is like you would need somebody who's independently wealthy, maybe not quite like Elon Musk, you know, or Jeff Bezos, but somebody who's willing to lose money. Because that's what I think it really comes down to. Demographically, most individuals kind of know exactly what they're looking for. And if you wanted to create, you know, please forgive the archaic concept, a United Colors of Benetton kind of porn company where everything is truly represented across the spectrum, you're probably going to have to be driven on the fact to avoid the analytics and the demographics and the feedback and just say, fuck it all. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and yeah, go all that in. That would be right. Absolutely. Make the porn you want, not what the porn exactly. you want. Right, make, and then make, and you need to produce something that defines the industry, doesn't get defined, and really yeah. break all the molds. You know, like right. uh, had been said earlier in the chat about you know how like certain demographics of individuals you know are seen a specific way, like the only fantasy that there is of that, and that's absolutely problematic. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that we hopefully are above all that, but I think you know it's. It's no. problematic because it's, you know, it's like, well, I don't participate in that. I don't do that particular thing. I don't watch that. But it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that uh, it's it's up to us, you know, as consumers to make some, you know, the decisions of what it is that we're going to do, how we're going to handle that stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, that's something for an, another discussion in that case. I so, really, really look forward to that future conversation. I think there's some really good stuff to be hashed out there. Absolutely. Uh, was there anything else from any of you that you want to discuss in terms of like the self image and confidence of what we got out of porn? No. Uh, Not that I could think of at least. Hold on. Yeah, you know, I would, I always like to remind people, you know, treat porn like an art medium and realize that it's an exaggeration of what real life is and that what you see is not the way you're supposed to act or even the way you're supposed to do it. It's just an example. It's just like any other TV show. It's, it's, it's a caricature of an actual act. Yeah, so that's a really take, good take, way to put it. Take, 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 you know, take the two cents from it and realize that real life is very, very different. And there's those are real human beings on the screen doing real acts. They're not leprechauns. They're not computer generated. They are real human beings doing that act. And that's one thing about movie magic that you can't replicate. That porn doesn't get the benefit of. When you see a when you see a horror movie and someone gets killed, that's corn syrup and red and red uh, red dye. When you see it come shot on on porn, that's the real deal, mostly. Um, but the, the, the sexual <laughs> acts themselves are real. Remember that that that's not that's not acting. That's real thing, and those are real human beings putting them at risk for your entertainment. And to mm -hmm. keep keep that in mind, remember that porn is still still fantasy. And, yeah. the, and if you're planning on filming yourself and making amateur porn, put the camera down somewhere it's so much easier to have sex when you're not having to worry about holding a camera <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know motion control blur sure. technology can only do so much exactly it also remember uh, showing the part 
Disgusting. Would they putting on the condom? Shut, shut up, Siri. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one, I have no idea what it's doing. <laughs> it's an English guy, Siri, too. <laughs> what is it doing? Like the Pythagorean hey, Siri, theorem? Shut up. Thank you. Okay, I'll send it. <laughs> 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 I was trying to send something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so say theory there. <laughs> when when you're filming porn and you're if you're using a condom, have the part of somebody putting on the condom. You can't make it look sexy. Yes, you can. So, so yeah. yeah. In fact, if you see some of the uh, see the blooper reel from uh, Bear Voyage Two, um. You see an entire section where Daddy Hadrian explains how to put on a condom. Such a good little yeah. condom. Yeah, good little condom. Put it on. Granted, that was in the blooper reel and not in the actual porn. Yeah, I'm so just, you, you just started I'm, 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 I'm dead it's serious, fun. like fun. commenting on that. I, that's why I said it's, it's in the blooper reel. Well, okay, but, but here's the thing. When that was filmed with Hadrian, as we get ready to wrap up, that was like just a goofy moment. Like that wasn't oh, yeah. actually... A part yeah, of it was the totally plot different. concept of the story, but still, it was just, you know, still it was not, it, it, it was love, my favorite part way, of them. I think I love porn boopers. I think they're the most important thing every studio puts out because yeah. it just really adds the human element to it. There's yeah. a bunch of humans just bumping uglies in the background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ha- having it's, people just just, just standing it's, it's, there it's, walking around and and, and joking. I, and I it, seriously, the Bear Voyage blooper reel. Was one of the best blooper reels, and that and not just that one little segment of the blooper blooper reels, but um, but it, it it was funny. It shows you how they were having fun filming. So uh, I would definitely definitely to, to check that out if you ever get the chance. Um, but uh, find it somewhere. I have no I'm idea sure. where it is. I have right a now, so. I have a copy. I have a copy somewhere. I'm well, sure. of course you have a copy. You have like seasons one through thirty or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyways, hey, guess what, folks? That's the end. Oh. Playways contact us. Pop over to our website, cubsoutloud.com. Uh, shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, leave us a voicemail at six year otherwise at three six one C O L talk. Uh, just like Q did last week. Um, at and uh, you can find us on various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course, right here on YouTube. You can join our entourage chat just like Owen and uh, Aaron did recently at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. There you would, would have been one of the first people to see my brand new goatee. Oh. I, I cut down from beard to goatee just yesterday, so. Um, and uh, as well as some other things, uh, somebody actually mentioned uh, uh, in there. It's kind of nice going to the shared media because it's like a replacement for Tumblr. Uh, anyways, that's our entourage hat at tinyurlcom slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're recording these uh, by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. You can buy various merchandise at our merch store, zazzle.com slash comes out loud, such as a consent is my Ford play shirt. We've got bear, puppy, and leather pride versions currently. Um, and more to come on that. And uh, uh, Gary has his sloppy bottom 23 shirt, which you can get that too. Um, you can also become a patron, uh, just like uh, Aaron did uh, recently. So we've got a brand new patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us to Google Play Podcasts, and over on Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet. It says box, set box, puppy box, cub box, something or other. Um, I am Theory Cup 79 on most bear related sites and also Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to find me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GareBear73. Uh, if you do reach out to me and it's because of the podcast, let me know. Otherwise, like, are you a bot? Like, are you just, like, fishing for profiles to follow? Come on. Like, communicate, people. Thanks. To say hi. <laughs> listen to the, hi, I listen to the podcast. By the way, the City's Cub actually messaged me on Twitter. Yes, I know. He's been chatting with me. He said that you seem <laughs> aloof and shy. Anyways. Adrian, if people would like to get in touch with you... <laughs> 
<laughs> How would they find you online? You can find me at thehadrianshow.com. And uh, with that, I do this, and I do this, I do this, uh, just so I can say, Good night, everybody! Good night, everyone! Have a good one, y'all. Welcome to the post ah, show. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Where we have lost the Hadrian, I believe. Oh, we lose Hadrian, or is he just... Yeah, he'd is probably he be that? back. I'm sure he'll be back. Gary. It looks like he was going inside. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't know if we actually lost him, lost him, or if he'll be back or not. Well, uh, I don't think I saw he left thing, so... Uh, he was anyway. the last time I saw him, but... Yes. You know, it's always fun to have a post show with Daddy Hadrian. <laughs> uh, porn, 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 porn. Sad that he won't be able to make it to my birthday party, but, you know. Well, we'll see. We shall see. He hey, said he might, have you, but have it's you, also Labor Day. Have you guys, uh, any of you guys have actually been able to get to the... Uh, new shirt. No, I just checked mm. before the show, and it's not showing under newest or anything. It says views fourteen, though. They're probably all you. I don't think I've you're looked the only at one who that seems... many times. I think you're the only one who's been able to see it. And, and as far as I could tell, I think it receives like a notification, like. Give me one second. Let me see. Let me see what happens when I. Does the shirt have an adult aspect to it? I mean, I did put it as PG thirteen. Just curious. I mean, for the most that... part, mo uh, like if see, with the smashy designs are essentially a yeah, it's probably no longer available. Maybe it's because sorry, I'm checking. Logged in. Like I just looked at, come on, there we go, products. Um, oh, hey, it did come up with the, yeah, that's probably what it was. What? Uh, let's see. Oh, dot com slash, because oh, I didn't put it as R. Yeah, it shows up when you log in. Mm. Fuck. Actually, let me, let me edit this. Oh. Uh, product merchandising and categories tags. I gotta switch this over. To... It's great to publish this. Done. I'm not sure if that necessarily changed. It's not showing up for me yet. Let's see. Sign out. Oh. So I need to smash the collection now. Okay. Now I can see it. So yeah, you have to wait to I had to wait until I signed on. Yeah. 
So for those of you who are wondering where the new Smashy shirt is, try just making sure that you're logged into Zazzle and you should be able to see it. Just fine. So they're preventing it from being public? Well, it's public, but I think it needs like something like age verification-ish sort of thing, so you have to be logged in. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, there's that. Um, <laughs> I'm loving Hadrian's random like screen grabs. <laughs> Must have been trying to hit another button, but he accidentally hit the uh, screenshot button. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was trying to like either respond to chat messages or something that were popping up for him and he just uh, didn't quite realize how that was going to affect things. All right. Um, why do I not have that saved? I don't know. Why don't you have that saved? Silly person. Uh, I'm going to stop streaming by the way.